Revolve features are created by revolving a 2D profile around an axis. The process is similar to extruded features. The difference is that Revolve features use a circular path, while extruded features use a linear path, which is usually perpendicular to the sketch profile. Revolves require axis symmetric geometry and a line that is used as the axis in a sketch. In the right conditions, a sketch line can also be used as a center line. In this lesson, you will learn how to create a piston head using the revolve feature. To create a revolve feature, we first need to create a sketch. So let's use the front plane, clicking on the front plane and going to sketch to begin our sketch. Using the line tool, we can start from our orange origin point and go directly up and then hitting escape. Reason being is I want to change this line to a construction line. So we can click on it and go to construction geometry. Now this line will act as our center axis of revolution. Using the line tool, we can continue from that line we created, go across, going down, across, waiting for that inference line back to the origin point, and then across to the origin, and pushing escape to finish. Before we dimension the rest of the profile, we wanna make sure that we're using diameter values instead of a radius value. And we can do this by using the construction line we just created. Be aware that because we created a construction line, it has actually changed this profile to a open loop instead of a closed loop but we can still use this profile to create a revolved feature. In many cases, the profile won't be directly connected to the axis of revolution. Now we can begin adding dimensions to fully define this profile. Using the Smart Dimension tool, click on the construction line and then the outside edge. And you'll notice that we just have a regular dimension, which if we place now would act as a radius for our revolution. We want to use this as a diameter value, and you can do that by just going to the other side of the construction line and you'll notice the dimension changes to a full diameter value. SolidWorks automatically recognizes that you wanna use a diameter whenever you dimension to a center line and then go to the opposite side of it. So if we now place this and put in a value of 150, we now have a diameter value of 150 mils. We also want this piston head to have a continual wall thickness. And one way of doing that is by selecting our construction line and this bottom line and giving them an equal relation. Now, if we use the Smart Dimension tool again and either dimension this construction line or the bottom line, as they are both equal, we can just dimension one of them and we're going to give it a value of 20 millimeters. This way, the wall thickness is always continually 20 millimeters due to that equal relation between those two lines. The final dimension we need is the height of the piston head. So again, using our Smart Dimension tool, we can click on this outside. We want a height of 125 mils. Clicking OK to select. And if you want a quick shortcut to zooming the extents of the drawing, you can just push Control-1 on the keyboard. The sketch is now fully defined and we can exit this sketch. To create a revolve feature, there are two ways we can do this. We can either go to the menu at the top, going to insert, boss base, and then clicking on revolve, or in the feature manager, we can make sure our features tab is selected and then go to revolve boss base. We want to select the sketch as it's asking to select a sketch. And you'll notice that it's saying that the sketch is currently open. Would we like to automatically close the sketch? And we will say yes. So that is due to that construction line we created and the loop not being completely closed, but SolidWorks can automatically close it for us. In the options of the Revolve feature, you'll notice that the axis of revolution has already been selected. That is because in our sketch profile, we created that construction line and SolidWorks is smart enough to realize that it's going to act as the central point of revolution. So it automatically selects it for us. But if you wanted to change it for some reason, you could right click on that area and go to clear selections and then pick something else to act as the axis of revolution. But in this case, it is correct and we'll just leave it as it is. Also, you'll notice in the graphics window, there is a preview of the revolution showing. If there did happen to be other contours that you wanted to select, you can change this in the select contours and then go through your sketch, picking individual contours to revolve. Similar to extrude bosses and extrude cuts, the options are very similar. So we have our direction one and our direction two. We also have a thin feature option as well as the just mentioned selected contours. In our directions, we also have the ability to select different end conditions. 
Finally, you have an input value, which is the angle of revolution. So of course, a full 360 degrees is going to be a full revolution, but you could change that to 180 for a half revolution or 90 degrees for a quarter. And of course, anything in between as well. You can change the direction of the revolution by clicking on the reverse direction. But in our case, we do want the full 360 degrees. With our options all selected, we can just click on the green OK check mark to complete the feature. But there is also another way which you should get familiar with. Whenever you're creating features, normally you can right click and go to OK to complete the feature. And this might be just a slightly faster process to going over to the top and clicking all the time. Our piston head is now complete with the center cut out as per our sketch profile. And before we move on to a revolved cut, I want to show you a quick way of checking measurements. Normally you would use the measure tool, but there is also another way you can check measurements. If we were to click on the face, you can see down around about here in the status bar, it'll say diameter 150. Unfortunately, you can't see it in this case because my uh, camera display is covering it, but that is a quick way you can check dimensions. We are now going to use the revolve feature again to create a revolve cut around the outside face of this cylinder. To begin, we need to create another sketch on the front plane. So clicking on the front plane and going to sketch. This time we're going to use a center rectangle and using the outside edge of the cylinder, just dragging out and dropping. This is going to create an automatic relation between the center point of the rectangle and the outside edge of the cylinder. Therefore, making sure this cutout is always on the outside edge of our cylinder face. This will give our model better design intent by making sure if the cylinder ever changes shape, the center point of the rectangle is going to follow the edge with it. Also notice that the way we placed the rectangle, the edge of it is outside of the face of the cylinder. This is best practice when creating revolved cuts, as it makes sure that all the material is actually being cut away from the body of the part. Using our dimension tool, we want to create a height of 15 millimeters for our rectangle. We are going to give it a distance from the top of our cylinder head of 25. And the final dimension is from the outside edge of the rectangle to the silhouette edge of the cylinder, and we're going to make that 5 millimeters. This makes sure we always have that 5 millimeter overhang from the face of the cylinder. We are now ready to exit the sketch and create the revolved feature, but I want to show you a quick little shortcut. Whenever you plan to use a sketch profile to create a feature, instead of exiting the sketch and then starting the feature, you can start the feature directly from the sketch, and therefore it'll automatically select that sketch to create the feature. So we haven't exited the sketch, but we want to go to the features and we want to create a revolved cut. So SolidWorks automatically knows that we're going to use our sketch profile to create this revolved cut, but it does need an axis of revolution. You may also need to select some specific contours, but this process should save you a little bit of time. Now for the axis of revolution, we didn't create one in this profile, and that's because we want to use the original sketch profile we did and the axis we placed in that profile as the axis for this revolved cut. This way ensuring that the revolved cut is always central with the original revolved feature. If we just drag out and go to a bit of an isometric view, what we want to do is expand our design tree and go to the original revolve so we can see the sketch. Right click on that sketch and go to show. And that way we can see the original sketch in our graphics window. And so for the axis of revolution, we can click on that and pick our center line. So SolidWorks is now giving us a preview of the cut and all the options are the way we want them and we can click on OK. The last thing we want to do is hide that sketch we just showed. So we can right click on the sketch and go to hide and this hides it from the graphics window. So our cylinder head is now complete. So we have our revolved cut through the outside face and we can also see the inside of it like this and that completes this lesson. There's one more tool I want to show you as a bonus in this lesson. That is whenever you create a part which may have some sort of internal geometry like this and you want to get a better view of it instead of trying to sort of look underneath or to the side, you can actually create cross sections. And you can do this up in the top here of the SolidWorks. You'll see a sectional view. If you click on that, you get this sort of sectional view created. 
you have some options here which you can play around with, which will act as different planes you can work from. So we can either do it from like a top or a side or this. You can drag where the sectional cut begins. You can also rotate and drag around a bit more and then click OK. So you can create some really interesting sectional cuts and it's not actually removing anything. It's just sort of hiding it from the visibility and it might just give you a better view so you can sort of play around and do some more sketching and referencing. And then when you're finished with it, you can just go back up and click on the section view to bring it back to its normal state. So that was just a quick bonus tip in this lesson, but that does bring us to the end of the lesson. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video and let's move on to the next lesson.